Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Apples and Tiaras. Today, I am in my third grade classroom. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and pause this video, click that subscribe button, and if you're not following me on Instagram, run on over there, follow me on Instagram because I do a lot of updating on Instagram and uh, through stories and things like that. So today I thought it would be fun to start kind of a new series. I've been feeling kind of a slump in my content area for my teacher portion of this channel. If you guys have been with me a while, then you know that where I wanted to go with my channel here on YouTube was more of like a life as a teacher channel showing all aspects. Motherhood, balancing work, and managing a household, managing work, and other parts of life. Just a working mom who happens to be a teacher. So I've been trying to balance teaching content with non-teaching content, so today's video is going to be teaching related. I would like to start a series on how to teach certain subjects and how to teach certain skills. So right now I have begun teaching fractions here in my third grade classroom and I have had an abundance of people asking me how do you introduce fractions to your third graders? So what I would like to do real quick is just get a show of hands down in the comments below. How many of you are either one a student teacher or an aspiring teacher, meaning you're in your internship, you're in your student teaching, you're still in college, and you're looking for ways to learn about how to teach. So raise your hand down below in the comments. You can use an emoji or say hi or something um, if you're a student teacher or an aspiring teacher. And then second, if you're a first year teacher or if you're a first year teacher in the grade level that you're in and maybe you're fresh in third grade or fresh in fourth grade. Those are the two grade levels that I have personally taught so I would love to be able to reach to you individually just because I have taught those grade levels and I feel that I am knowledgeable in the content enough to <laughs> first of all teach the children, second of all teach you how to teach it. So I'm going to show you just basically what I do <clears throat> for teaching fractions, introducing fractions. I'm going to show you the resources and the materials that I use and then I'm going to kind of then I'm going to kind of talk through what I say to the kids to make sure that I drill in the most important parts of fractions. So, we're going to take a little walk over to my teaching station and we're going to just get started. We're going to dive right in. First things first, think about learning targets. I'm going to share a resource with you where I find my learning targets um, because I feel like sometimes with these standards it's hard for me to formulate a learning target because there are so many parts to each piece. So I'm going to just share with you a website real fast and then we're going to get started. So the website that I use to find or create my learning targets, and this isn't the only one I use, this is just if I'm unsure about which learning targets I want, I use wiki-teacher.com. So this is what the home page looks like, and I know I could do a screen recording, but I'm on my work computer, so I just want to make this more like quick so that I can get into the actual stuff. But basically up at the top here, you can click on unwrap standards, choose the grade level and the area that you're looking for, and then it comes up with all of the standards listed here. So I'm just going to scroll down to the fraction standards and click on the first one, NFA1. Understand a fraction 1B as the quantity formed by one part when a whole is partitioned into B equal parts. Understand a fraction AB as the quantity formed by parts of size 1B. So basically that's the kids knowing that the denominator is the amount of equal parts a whole is made of, and the numerator is how many parts are being represented. So I'm just going to click this, and then once you get into the actual standard that you want, there are a lot of resources here. So there's learning targets, and I'm going to click on that in a minute, vocabulary, essential questions, and then there's also alignments here and ELL considerations. So if you're wanting to see what they did in second grade or the grade before, or what they're going to be doing in the grade after you, you could click on vertical alignment and it will share with you all of the standards that are either before 
or after in the grade level before or after you. So this is kind of nice because you'll kind of know like what they're going to be expected to do with the information you teach them this school year. So my favorite spot is vocabulary and learning targets. So I look here to see what vocabulary I might need to use. So we have compose, decompose, denominator, numerator, fraction, and then partition, which is a big one, unit fraction, which is humongous, especially for this standard. Students need to know that just one part of each whole is called a unit fraction. And I actually tie it into little unit squares. These are obviously not units, these are rods. But um, I tie it into unit squares, so I show them a unit square and then tie it into a fraction thing. So anyway, then you can go up to learning targets, and this is where I like to find all of my learning targets. If I'm not sure of how I want to word it or create it myself. So most of the time, there will be student-friendly learning targets in this list as well, but for this specific standard, there are not. Basically, this is what I use to find my learning targets. So most of the time, the student-friendly one will say like students can or I can, and then these are the learning targets. So the first learning target, um, I wouldn't use understand that a fraction is a number. I would use that as part of my teaching and just explaining to the kids that a fraction is a number that represents a part of a whole. So that would be more of like a teaching point, but this could easily be a learning target for you. Understand that the denominator of a fraction represents the number of equal sized parts that make a whole. So again, this might be more of like a vocabulary learning target, something that you could have for a long period of time because the kids will not remember this the first day. Hopefully they do, but if they don't, this is something that you're gonna be covering most days of your fraction unit. And then the same thing for numerator here. Okay, so this one right here is one of the first ones that I used. Compose fractions with unit fractions. This is not how I worded it. I worded it more like, I can divide a whole into equal size parts and label each part as a unit fraction. So I kind of took it from here and I reworded it more for kid friendly and that was one of my learning targets. So each day I have a different learning target or I build upon them. So as you can see, yesterday's learning target was I can represent a fraction on a number line and identify them. So not only was I having my students build their own number lines and put fractions on them, but I also had them looking at already created number lines and identifying a fraction on the number line. So they had to do two things, not just one. So you wanna be very cognizant of your learning targets for what you actually want your student to be able to do at the end of your lesson. Anyway, so I am still pushing the fraction vocabulary in my classroom. Um, so I have this big thing displayed here because my students don't have this memorized yet and we are in week two of fractions. So I have that um, labeled there. And then another thing that I have is just the names of fractions and what they look like. So that students, if they have a hard time spelling eighths or looking at how many equal parts and actually what they're called, this is here just in case they need it um, as, a re as a reference. Now, a lot of what I use for teaching my students is I usually create some sort of like vocabulary page so that kiddos can look. This isn't a fraction one, but this is like for properties. Um, I have the vocab word, the definition, and then I show an example. This is all through Avid. This is three column notes. So I try to use Avid as much as possible. But for fractions, since there wasn't a lot of vocabulary, I just started with an Amy Grosbeck anchor chart, and I use these for my students to take notes on. These are on TPT. If you'd like to buy them, just look up Amy Grosbeck anchor charts, and I'm pretty sure she has them for many grade levels. But... I use these for vocabulary and for examples. So this was day one of my fraction unit. We started with just vocabulary, and then I had the students draw and take notes. And then we also talked about what is an equal part and what is not, because 
when students are drawing and creating their own fractions, modeling their own fractions, you want to make sure that they're not creating unequal parts when they're drawing. So one thing that I also taught them was that when you have a fraction that you're creating that has an even number of parts, you can cut it in half first and then think about how many parts would be on each side. This is really good because when you're getting into equivalent fractions and then putting fractions on a number line, when the number line's labeled zero, one half, and one whole, students can get confused and not know what to do with the one half that's labeled. So yesterday, my kids and I talked about, well, what other fractions could we rename as one half? So we listed all of the ones that we would probably see up on the board so that when we saw a number line labeled one half, if it had a numerator of one of, or a denominator of one of these, we could automatically put one of these on the one half mark so that we already knew it was there. So anyway, um, we have equal parts here and not equal parts. Again, this is Amy Grossbeck. I use her anchor charts to teach pretty much everything just because she has everything laid out here. All of the vocab is really good. Um, then we went into what a unit fraction is because my first learning target was they had to, first of all, divide a piece into equal parts. Secondly, they had to label each part. So we went through and we filled in what a unit fraction is. Then we moved into there are ways to represent fractions. We started with just parts of a whole. Um, we focused on these two first, and then once I got through parts of a whole, that was a whole day, uh, we did one of these. So I showed the students how to name it in a word form. I showed them how to draw models of each one, so they just practiced. Sometimes, if I know my kids are working really well, I will let them, like, I'll do two of them, and then I'll let them do the rest, and I'll check. That way, it's a quick formative assessment for me to see where they're at. And then again, this is a blank one because I put mine up on the board, but this is that um, anchor chart that's right over there. So all of the kids have these in their notebooks. Um, and then again, unit fraction. I just stapled these on top because I ended up not gluing them in. But then we have this one and I showed them on a number line how if you are having a hard time with the number line, you can just create a rectangle around it and then the number line just goes right through it. So. It's basically the same thing as creating parts of a whole, especially if you're doing it as a strip diagram there. Um, and then we went into fraction bars. So they saw a lot of this on their Prodigy game. My students use Prodigy to practice their skills for math intervention while I pull small groups. And so this was something they were seeing a lot there, so I wanted to make sure to cover it. This is mostly used for like problem solving with fractions. And then Monday, we started fractions on a number line. Now, I did have the anchor chart for this, but I forgot to make copies for the kids. So I literally just copied the anchor chart onto my notebook and showed the students and they copied it themselves. So some days we just fill in the blanks and some days we create the anchor chart in our notes. So this was just a step-by-step -step how to put a fraction on a number line. So this went along with my learning target. I can create a number line and represent a fraction on a number line. So this was the very first day they worked with number lines. Then I went on to draw a number line and I asked them what fraction is being represented by the point. This was the second part of that learning target. I can identify a fraction on a number line. This has already been made for them. Most of the time there will be a half part label here, but I wanted to save that for another day because I just wanted to introduce them counting each line on the number line, not counting zero. This is super important when you get to number lines. Zero does not count. You start counting at the first mark past zero. One, two, three, and four. Also super important to make sure that you teach your students that one whole is equal to a fraction that has the same numerator and the same denominator. That way when they start seeing that the same number is on top and bottom, they already know it's one whole and they can label that right away. So that is as far as we've gotten. Another thing that I use are these exit slips and I forget the seller of these but I will try to link them down below. Um, but there are exit slips for pretty much every standard and I just use these as quick checks. Like I'm probably gonna give them this one 
before I start teaching today to just see what they remember from the day before. So there's three different exit slips that I could use before, after, or even during a lesson just for a formative assessment, a quick check, and then I just keep track in my little notebook. So hopefully this video is helpful to some of you who are teaching third grade for the first time or you're interested in teaching third grade and you're just wanting to learn a little bit about like how to teach something. Um, while I'm teaching, I'm very energetic, I'm very bright, I have the kids chanting, I have the kids getting up, I have the kids talking. So a lot of what I do is getting them engaged in the learning but also taking notes and practicing throughout. So I always have their whiteboards out, they're always drawing pictures, they're always doing examples. I rarely use the textbook. Um, sometimes it's just for practice, sometimes I steal the problems from the textbook and use them on their whiteboard. So instead of them doing it in a book, they do it on their whiteboard. So I try to use my district's curriculum as best I can, but I also use other things to supplement. So I hope this video was informative. Um, Hopefully it was helpful to those of you who asked me about how do I introduce fractions. Um, and absolutely use that resource wikiteacher.com to get your learning targets from and to just unwrap the standards a little bit more if you're not sure about them or you have a hard time understanding them because they are written kind of funny and we do have to really analyze them as teachers. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more updates. And I will see you guys on Sunday for my next video, which will not be teaching related. I'm going to try to put one teaching related video and one non-related video on my channel each week. So you'll be getting two videos each week, hopefully if I stay on my schedule. But um, I will see you guys Sunday and I hope you guys have a great week and um, bye.